Hour podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from Celebrate.io, joined again by Chris in New York playing with his soundboard. Hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> Let's hope not. No sirens today. That's the goal. Hey, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> in the unicorn interview, he'll say that he's contractually obliged to do that. Let's see if this works out. Um, this is this month in German startups by startuprate.io. And this is our summer wrap up. So that means we're talking about everything that was going on in the German speaking startup scene in July, August and September. As we said, Chris joins us from New York and I'm here close to Frankfurt. We recorded this episode on September 28th. Um, not that there is, note that there is another episode coming out pretty soon after this one with our unicorn tracker covering the same time span. Um, have a look. This also will be a little bit longer episode since we are wrapping up three months. So best get a snack and a drink right now. We wait for you. Yeah, go ahead. Come on. Great. Good to have you back. Um, the summer was hot here in Germany, at least in terms of startups, not so much in terms of temperature. Since we have the weather now out of the way, let's talk startups. If you want to be con found by business opportunities or contacted by investors, you can enroll in our scouting database in Google Forms down here in the show notes. We don't sell you your data or spam you. We'll even reach out to you before we include you in a scouting mandate. Housekeeping. Time to brag. Poof. We put the numbers together and so far we scored in 58 countries in the podcast charts for more than 3,900 days and counting. Thank you to our audience. It would have not been possible without you. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, Clint Marketing included Startuprate.io in the best startup podcast lists, Discover Podcasts for Entrepreneurs 2019. Um, and our radio station is growing like crazy. The new schedule starts on October 1st. And so far, as of mid of September, we are growing with more than 30% month over month. Talk about top news. Again, there's a special episode of our unicorn tracker coming out with this episode. Have a look there uh, for everything related to unicorns. We cover there the story of gorillas, the investment of DoorDash, SPAC deals, Liam, SPAC IPO, as well as the troubles at N26. July 29th was a monster funding day for the German startup scene. Um, for Contentful, ESA, Aerospace and Grover, go to our special episode to learn more. Now we get to the shooting star of the German startup scene. The German biotech startup BioNTech in the US known to be the brain behind the uh, Pfizer vaccine is called there, right? Yeah. Great. Um, and they crossed the magic threshold on August 4th. They surpassed 100 billion US dollar market capitalization in Nasdaq trading, this is approximately three times the market cap of, for example, DAX constituent delivery hero. Um, the stellar performance of BioNTech shares changes also the ranking of Germany's billionaires. The main investors now rank second most wealthy Germans. You can learn more about them here in a blog post we wrote linked down here in the show notes. Also, BioNTech vaccine could give Germany an extraordinary boost. The German drug maker could see revenues contributing about half a percentage point to the growth of uh, the cross domestic product. Chris, you got yeah. some news on Wirecard? Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, Wirecard, we've been talking about them for the past couple of months and the ongoing investigation there. Uh, once again, a reminder, Wirecard is a company that deals in um, or that dealt in uh, the handling of credit card transactions. And the story behind it was that they had billions of, US, of euros inside their books for which there was just no... Um, 
actual assets. And the thing was that a lot of German politicians were very keen on getting on board, um, saying that this is, or hoping that this would be one of the biggest success stories in German startup world. Then it turned out not to be that case. And so where are we right now? We have um, news that the German prosecutor investigate, uh, prosecutors investigate investigate, sorry, uh, suspicious share dealings of the former Wirecard sub supervisory board member. And we also had media reports on the involvement of EY Law in acquisitions valued at um, 264 million euros. Some of them now appear questionable. Um, so the question that is being discussed is what was the um, actual relationship there? And was there a conflict of interest within um EY between audit and law. Uh, three of the transactions are especially questionable. GFG Group, PT Prima Vista Solusi, and PT Prisma. All three companies acquired client portfolios from letterbox companies shortly before being bought by Wirecard. Then majority of the acquisition was made up by these client portfolios. So a lot of um, moving parts and pieces there. Uh, this is our last coverage of Wirecard as a standalone topic in summer. The German parliament published its final uh, report on Wirecard. It's uh, spanning more than 2,000 pages. Um, if you are so inclined, we have the link to that on the website of the German Bundestag. Um, you have to read German and you have to be, uh, have, you have to have the stamina for 2,000 pages. Back to another kind of animal. <laughs> yeah, or back to a fight. What Chris is referring to is the German pet supplier, the online shop Zoo Plus or Zoo Plus in German. Um, private equity companies are fighting over them. Helmand and Freeman announced their intention to buy a 50% plus stake of Munich-based SDAX company Zoo Plus, uh, and they offered 390 euros per share. So the war went on with KKR joining the ranks and EQT. At one point, um, Heltman and Friedman, Hellman and Friedman increased their offer, but EQT was still in the race, but KKR threw in the towel. And then the last update we have now EQT increased their offer, of course, above Hellman and Friedman. We will keep you updated there, but I do believe there's a lot of happy shareholders right now. Chris, you got something on the ecosystem, right? Yeah, um, so ecosystem, the part of our show where we are talking about um, not about companies, but more about the um Yeah, the surrounding parts within the German uh, startup scene. We, for example, have this time around an article um, or an, a recommendation, let's say, for the CBDC tracker, um, which shows that over 80 countries representing 90% of the global GDP are exploring a central bank digital currency. That is the um, like CBDC. And um, you can see more of that. Uh, through a link we have via the Atlantic Council. We also have new um, news about the most important German stock index, the DAX 30, because now the DAX 30 is a DAX 40, meaning 10 additional companies were added. Um, and um, among them were Zalando, HelloFresh, and Zimrise. Um, And, um, but the very first day actually numbers went down, which had to do with, uh, mostly with China and the Evergrande, um, real estate problems there. Germany is also the first country in the world with a law regulating self-driving vehicles. It came into force on July 28th. And, uh, yeah, maybe it will be one day in the history books and uh, that tech geeks will look back on. Uh, there will be a special publication on this topic as an interview with a lawyer, hopefully, uh, in our startup radio world, talking about what the law does and does not do. And we have as a recommendation a list of the 50 most influential women in the German tech scene. On the VC market, um, we are asking, is it normal what's going on here with the creation of unicorns within 10 months after they were founded? Um, some articles about the market in general we found helpful and interesting within the last couple of weeks. We, ha for example, have the trend indicator for the German VC scene, um, and which is on a record level, never seen before, says uh, KF 
W Capital. We see that investments in German fintechs jump 150% from 1 billion euro in um, the first half of 2020 to 2.5 billion euro in the first half of 2021. Investments here include Trade Republic, Scalable, and Mambu. And we have an article why VC valuations increase and why this might be a trap. So quite uh, uh, to the contrary that, uh, of that. Um, the uh, Europe's quick commerce startups are overhyped. Lessons from China is um, an article related to that. We also have an old unicorn episodes about the German fintechs I was just starting about. And then we have a survey about the biggest brands in the German startup world with um, the top five being at number five, Flash and Post, number four, Trade Republic, three, Gorillas, two, Vivid, and number one, Arab. And now let's have a look at specific cities and the biggest news there. And we start with your hometown of and financial metropolis of Europe, Frankfurt. <laughs> Yes, one of the financial centers of Europe, Frankfurt. We are in the hubs section. About the hubs, note the order of the news and cities is only due to the time when we discovered the news. We took the time to allocate almost all startups to hubs at this point in time. Give us feedback how you liked it. Talking about Frankfurt and the Rhine-Main region. Um, we will talk about Wingcopter, the drone startup. Of course, you can find an interview with the CEO and founder there. Um, they partner with Air Methods for nationwide drone delivery service. And then more recent, uh, one of Uber's co-founders invested in Wingcopter an undisclosed amount. Melita, Chris, is there something equivalent in the US? Here it's like Kroger's. It's a household name for coffee in Germany, and they buy Frankfurt-based Roast Market, an online store for high-end coffee. Uh, going a little bit to a uh, Frankfurt-based gaming area, Crycheck is a company that offers a 3D engine behind a lot of games, especially ego shooters. Now the Chinese tech giant Tencent reportedly is interested in buying this game software company. Interestingly, also the US Army, the German Bundeswehr and other NATO armies are using the software for simulations. On other news, Frankfurt-based Northern Data acquires Dutch crypto mining company Decentric Europe for 365 million euros. And in the article, you can find out why. The operator of the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, Xetra, owner of stocks and DAX called Deutsche Börse AG, thereby two-thirds of Swiss-based Crypto Finance AG, a crypto exchange. Looking at startup IPOs in Frankfurt since 2000, they raised 8.2 bill, 8.8 billion euros in the first half of 2021, which is record breaking since 2000. And Jack Wolfskin, founder, Jack Wolfskin is um, an outdoor fashion brand popular in Germany. Its founder, Ulrich Dausien, invests in st Frankfurt-based startup Evicos. We found in another article that the total investment round was 1.2 million euros. Now we go a little bit more to the south. Not so much south at Chris would cover this, but Bruchsal is between the beautiful city of Heidelberg and Stuttgart. Vodokopter is headquartered there and they start a joint venture with China-based Geely subsidiary. Geely started out with ordering 150 air taxis. Going a little bit more south is the region of Chris, right? Yes, uh, we are going south east actually, um, to, uh, Munich or to be more specific, Wessling, um, in the outskirts of Munich where air taxi startup Lillian generates a 29 fold return on Atomico Bet. Um, 
We also have more about Lilium's IPO in our Unicorn Tracker and mentioned them a couple of times now. Um, and in Munich itself, we saw the second closing for the Impact VC Fund Bon Venture 4 at 35 million euros. We saw that the drink star drinks startup Arab raises 40 million dollars, 40 million euros in venture capital. Uh, the round was led by Pepsi with other investors, including Ippen Media, a um, German newspaper company and Oyster Bay. Plus the, the in people in the audience may remember this to be the number one of our startup brand ranking. Two minutes ago. If people oh, pay yeah. attention, they might remember. <laughs> Um, we have Inshotech Auto Nova, which raises 40 million euros in venture capital. You can learn more about the company and the founder, founder in an interview we did with him. And, um, the PropTech Capmo raises 30 million dollar series B to expand in Europe and triple the team within 12 months. And also there you can learn more about the company and the founder in an interview we did. Um, and from Munich, a bit further up north in our little uh, geographical quiz here, Augsburg, uh, there we have Xentral, a Bavaria-based startup that ra uh, raised 64 million euros in venture capital for an enterprise resource planning solution for merchants. Investors here included Sequoia and Tiger Global. And now big jump to the north and to Hamburg. And you. Yes, Thank you. I'll not confuse you with directions. Basically, we talk Hamburg now. Green New Bank tomorrow raises 14 million euros venture capital. Now reports unveil the top model, Tony Garn, amongst investors. And Hamburg-based sports uh, Sport Alliance lends 60 million euros to grow its gym and fitness SaaS solution. Going to Dusseldorf. SPAC listed Tony Box producer Boxine. You remember the, 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 it's, it's like a little box and you can put figurines on it. And basically that is how you play the audio. It's very convenient for small kids. Um, they, uh, get listed, uh, on the stock exchange in Q4 2021, valuing the company at 860 million euros. Before that, they were aiming for unicorn. Um, status and the company is looking to expand to France as well as we have 10 promising Düsseldorf based startups to watch in 2021 and beyond. Going to Cologne, Cologne based Sastrify naps 5.9 million euros to help companies optimize their SaaS tools. And we also have a watch list of 10 promising Cologne based startups to follow in 2021. And the German grocery giant Rewe tests autonomous driving kiosks. Just wave at one like a cap and it will stop and allow you to shop snacks. Pretty interesting idea that the test is going on in Cologne. We are going to the city of Mannheim. Klana pays 110 million euros to acquire Mannheim-based shopping app Stokart. Then we go to a city, uh, to two cities likely not a lot of Germans would know. Groß Röhrsdorf. It's 35 kilometers outside of Dresden in Sachsen. The startup Skeleton Technologies, a technology leader in energy storage, raises 29 million euros venture capital. Amongst investors is the founder of Aiden, uh, Edien, MM Group. Harju Elector and leading industrial CVCs. The other city is Halle Saale. Um, 40 million in Series B funding for Twinner from Halle Saale. Uh, they enable digital twins of existing cars. And sorry, I have to give my little boy here a high five. <laughs> We're having a little bit of a, uh, of a BBC ah, he's moment. He's already gone. <laughs> Mom took care of him. Chris. I hand it over to you from Halle Saale to Austria, I do believe. Yeah, it's a bit of a BBC <laughs> moment where the kid walks in and then the mom like ah, drags him out. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, yeah, um, Austria, since we always try to look at the whole German language uh, 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 part of Europe. So in Austria, we uh, also have a lot of startup news with um 
surprisingly with a surprisingly huge growth we have uh the vienna based corticalio which raises six million dollars in a series a funding but also the vc unica ventures part of unica insurance that doubles its assets under management to 150 million euros to focus on series a investments we see that also the B vienna based coin penion wants to bring crypto to the masses founders of german fintechs clark and scalable capital invested as well as the co founder of Runtastic. We see that the founders of fintech heavyweights WeFox and Bitpanda invest in Vienna-based fintech Helu. Um, we also covered Bitpanda in our unicorn tracker, Bitpanda, I think, but Bitpanda is more like a German would pronounce it. We have the Linz-based uh, 3D and AR room planning startup, um, which is sold to uh, the German corporate Homag Group AG, a world leader in heavy woodworking machines. And um, to give you the name of that, it's called Rumle, Room LE. Um, moving on to Switzerland, to the west of Austria, <laughs> the Zurich-based iSurance, a uh, next generation B2B2C digital insurance platform, um, which has been acquired by InsurTech Unicorn Bolt Tech. We have Anjarium Biosciences that raised $61 million in a Series A financing. We have Open Mineral with a $33 million Series C funding. And we have the SoftBand backed, backed storage developer Energy Vault that raised $100 million, which makes us move on to our next section, the general news, where we see that crypto custody licenses are approved by German finance oversight body BaFin. Um, German Coinbase subsidiary, subsidiary secures the first crypto license in Germany. And the BaFin also approved a second crypto license for the Berlin-based Kapi Lendo. And we see that 12 de with 12 deals in four months, the Chinese Ant Group builds crypto portfolio from Berlin. And you got more fintech stuff. Yeah, after crypto, let's do a little bit fintech. Sino, the first investor in fintech unicorn, Trade Republic, we had a special episode covering them and Sino, uh, has made its next bet. Sub capitals, which helps with automated portfolios. Have you ever heard of Flash Ventures from Berlin? It's Rocket Internet's second shot at entering fintech. This time with a fintech incubator already with 17 companies in its portfolio. Deutsche Bank buys one of Berlin's first fintechs, better payment for an unknown sum. The startup was founded in 2013. This is part of Deutsche's push back in payments. German digital wealth manager for Athlon clients invest, um, investment by LGT and existing investors. The, in, uh, the, um, robot advisor is named Liquid and Liquid itself was started by the Quant family office. Think, uh, largest shareholders of BMW and LGT is owned by the princely house of Liechtenstein. Not joking here. <clears throat> crowdfunding platform Capilendo you remember from up here with the um with the crypto license yes they are merging with finland based competitor investor investor already merged in 2019 with another company active in switzerland and germany paysafe snaps up berlin's via fintech in an all cash deal and finleap connect the open banking provider of fintech company builder finleap buys a startup in spain danish payment provider nets increases its stake in berlin based audibert to 40 percent valuing the company at 100 million there have been plans published but this time for germany to get its own ocean-based space launch platform in the North Sea, in the North Sea, ready by 2023. And talking about a little bit biotech here, 
CureVac was once hailed as a big German hope for Corona vaccine, cancel some of the smaller production contracts. You can learn more about them and the background in our blog post accommodating it. And I do believe, Chris, you have something on your favorite topic, Rocket Internet. Rocket Internet Corner. They uh, generated a record revenue in 2020, but also record write-downs as well for Way Eat First Helpling. The EBITDA losses um, 18 million euros in total, and the group turns a profit mainly from selling stakes and interest income. Startup Vey, V-A-Y, has a new take on car sharing. If you need a car, it will arrive with a remote driver. No need for parking as well after you're done with your ride. Let's see how that goes. And then we have uh, just a super small few selected um, investments and exits. And we come back to what we were talking about, the uh, quick delivery retail startup Joker, which I happen to have ordered from the very first time two days ago, <laughs> raised <laughs> 170 million, full disclosure, uh, 170 million dollars from investors. There, uh, two parts of my order were missing, by the way, and I did not get an answer after I had a contact via text message. So yeah. Joker. The founders of the company are delivery hero and SoftBank veterans, describing their company as Amazon on steroids. And it would not surprise us if the company will soon be a unicorn as well. But again, it's such a volatile market environment, the um, supermarket and grocery delivery, uh, quick delivery startups. We'll see how what happens there once the dust settles. Um, exclusive news by Deutsche Startups, 468 Capital invests in MAID, M-A-Y-D, delivering drugstore and pharmacy products similar to food delivery services. NPAL, a Berlin-based company renting out solar panels, raises 100 million euros uh, in venture capital. Investors include the cousin of Elon Musk and Holzbring Ventures. The Vapiano founder sells in -farm, his in-farm copy for 130 million euros. British PE investor Anacap buys the majority stake in the German startup WebID. The digital coaching platform CoachHub takes over a French competitor and raises additional funding to 130 million US dollars in total. And startup Ampel, oh, no, we all, uh, um, we already had Ampel, but they rent out solar arrays uh, and solar panels and they got a 75 $275 million loan from BlackRock, Precor Private Capital, from Prudential Financial and the Italian bank Uni Credit. We have Autodoc, a Berlin-based platform for auto parts. They are reported to prepare for an IPO. The legal form changed to an AG, uh, which can be listed on the stock exchange. The founder moves moved on to the supervisory board and an experienced manager takes over the CEO role. The German listed online furniture store Home24 wants to crack 1 billion euros in revenue next year in 20, uh, the year after next year in 2023. <laughs> and we have Disco Peter, Disco Peter, a robot from, uh, which is from now on delivering burgers in Berlin. Um, because if, if there's one thing that Berliners need to do is stay at home to have their burgers, burgers delivered. And then we have a couple of news, <laughs> stay uh, in our stay ahead of the curve section, which you can read by yourself, speaking a bit about digital euros, um, some of the secrets behind Europe's tech startups and 10 things your corporate culture needs to get right, right now. And, um, one thing about that is probably how to properly say farewell because this is it for this month in German startups and our summer wrap up. In case you don't have anything to add, I say thank you very much. Goodbye. And we will see you next time around. What do you say? Yes, Joe? totally. We will see you for this month in German startups in October when Chris will be back with his soundboard in New York. Uh, we didn't hear any sirens during this extremely long recording of 28 minutes. So not, not sure what's going on there. Just toddlers, just toddlers <laughs> in the background. Uh. Chris, it was, was a pleasure talking to you. See you again next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.